So this video will show how you can use what you've learned so far to design a simple steering algorithm for a robot. So now we have two motors controlled by an H-Bridge motor driver chip. So this is something you could build out of discrete transistors, but the nice thing about integrated circuits is they put a lot of functionality into a tiny package. So we're not going to discuss the details of how this chip works in this video, but the basic idea is that it allows you to do bi-directional control of two motors. So there are four control signals to the, going to this chip total, two for each motor that allow you to spin either motor either forward or reverse or bring it to a stop. And we have two switches here that we're going to pretend are bump sensors on the front of a robot. So you'll have to use your imagination a bit here since Tinkercad just gives us the Arduino and the breadboard. We can't actually do a robot driving around but we're going to pretend that, for example, these are mounted on the front of a robot, and if one sensor bumps into something, then we want the robot to turn, and if both sensors bump into something, then we want the robot to go in reverse. So it's kind of a very basic obstacle avoiding algorithm. So if we run this, you'll see, if I zoom in, I have a positive number here for my RPM on both motors, but if I toggle either one of the switches, that's going to cause the corresponding motor to go in reverse. So again, if this was a physical robot, with a left and right motor driving around, you can imagine how that would cause the robot to either turn left or right or go forward or drive in reverse, depending on the combination of what the two motors are doing. So if we look at the code for this, again, we will see that it's all made up of things you've already learned in previous videos when you were just controlling buttons and LEDs. So we have our data direction register that is setting a bunch of the pins as outputs for sending signals to the H-bridge and the other pins as inputs for reading signals from these switches. We are then setting an initial state for some of those pins because we want the motors to be spinning forward when the robot starts and the sensors are not triggered at all. Now we're going to enable some pin change interrupts. I'm using two pin change interrupts. So this is the first program we've seen where we have two separate interrupt service routines. And you might remember from earlier videos that you can trigger the, a, the same pin change interrupt from multiple pins. So here I have split them up. I have one of my pin change interrupts coming into port D and the other one going into port B, which allows me to trigger two different ISRs. I enable my interrupts. I have my infinite while loop to make sure the code never terminates, but nothing is actually happening in that code. And then in each one of my ISRs, I am using my port register and the bitwise OR operator to toggle the two bits corresponding to that motor. So again, there is no specific assignment for this video. What I wanted to do is demonstrate how you can take everything you have learned in the previous 15 videos, so we're all the way up to lesson 16 here, and apply it to something like building a robot that can drive around autonomously. So if you've gotten to this point, now you are really ready to step out of the simulator and go out into the real world and build something with an Arduino. There is also a lot more functionality to the Atmega328P that we did not cover in this video series. This is really just getting your feet wet, so there are plenty more resources you can explore on your own if you want to go deeper.